So you went viral maybe unexpectedly for some comments that you made after a fight, and I actually want to run that clip because it was sort of amazing. Let's was... watch it. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's number one. Hey, calm down. Calm down. Number two, I want to dedicate this fight to all the people who've been hurt by Marxist ideologies. There are millions of you, and I know it. And uh, it's just a fight. I know it's not much, but I want you to know that I love you, and I understand the pain. That's incredible. That is incredible. What possessed you to, I mean, thanking Jesus Christ, of course, oh, what yeah. possessed you to then dedicate it to, and especially right now with what's going on in Cuba, to the millions of people that are suffering under Marxist regimes? Well, there's a couple of things. The catalyst to it was uh, Thug Rose. I don't know if you were familiar with her. Mm -hmm. She came out, she just became champion again. She, was, uh, she fought uh, Wei Ling Zhang, and she came out and said, uh, better dead than red. And she, her family, uh, I believe it was Lith Lithuanian, and they, that was their slogan, better dead than red. And she got a terrible backlash, and I just couldn't understand it. I'm like, she's not saying anything crazy. You don't want communism. You don't want this socialism. This is what destroys countries and lives. So I, I saw how the media played it. They, they turn the, they turn in, they say, like, you know, co communism, it's not even an issue in America, things like that. And, uh, and, and they kind of put a lot of pressure on her. And I actually felt bad for her. I was like, she should be able to say that as much as she wants, and pretty much everybody should. So with that being said, I said, I'm, I'm, I was gonna actually just gonna say the same thing she said. But the issue is, it's the way they play with words. So you say communism, they say, well, we're not really talking about communism. We're talking about socialism. And you say socialism, they say, well, it's not that kind of socialism, it's, it's this. And I just said, Marxism. It covers it all. The, the only difference between these is, is, is one of them is a slower poison that's gonna kill you later on, and one of them just kills you fast, the other one kills you faster. So I just, I think we gotta make sure we start calling it just Marxism, and it's all one. You don't, you don't get to say, no, it's this. You don't get to say, it's all the same thing. Right, I mean, it's, Karl it's all... Marx wrote a book, and this is Marxist ideology. He was talking about taking a, a country that was capitalist, using socialism as a transitory, transitory state, yeah. and turning it into a communist state. And people don't understand those steps, and you are so correct that if you start with talking about Marxism, the ideology, Right? And, and, and the thought processes, the institutions that are practicing this Marxist ideology, so people might have a better grasp of what it is we're talking about. Interesting that you say that you know, she's from Lithuania, because there is this thing that the West, we have been blessed for so long that we don't know what socialism is. We don't know what Marxism is. And yeah. people come here from the East and they're like, are you crazy? Do you understand the cancer that we are talking about? You're from Iran. Yeah. And has that sort of been something that has sort of tethered you to uh, you know, oppressions that people can live in? That's one thing. My, my wife is Vietnamese, so her parents are from Vietnam, and they ran away from Marxism. Wow. They, they ran away from, from that, and they told me the stories. Her father basically came on a boat, and he would tell us, like, nine out of ten didn't make it. He was one of, one of the ten boats that did make it. So there's that. And then the stories her mom would tell me about how they got out of the house last minute. If they had stayed an extra day, they would be in, in a camp, or they'd be in prison, or whatever it was. So I hear those stories. And then in, in my country, the, the Ayatollah came and they promised all these free things. And they said, just let us take over and we're gonna do all this stuff for you. And they became, they made the government God. And it's the same, it's, it's no different. It's Marxist ideology. You make government number one and people give up their rights. And from there, we're gonna have vast improvement and prosperity and all that. and that it never comes because people don't realize the people who fight capitalism right now and they hate, they say, oh, this big corporation, you, this big corporation has a little bit of power because at the end of the day, you could say, I'm not gonna buy from you. And so you kill its power. The government, once it takes power, nobody takes that away. You don't take it, if it's, if it's gained, freely, it'll be taken back in blood. That's the only way you get away from communism, wow. Marxism. Wow, say it again, yeah. that sentence. If it's gained freely, it will be taken. The only way you're gonna get it back is in blood. And I, this is, it's been over and over. It's, it's proven, that, that's, that's historical. You can see it in history. It is such great news that President Donald Trump is suing the big tech lords to fight back against big tech's control of the internet. I use ExpressVPN. 
Ever wondered how free to access tech giants make all their money? Well, it's by tracking your searches, video history, and everything that you click on by building a profile on you. And then to be extra creepy, they sell off your sensitive data. When you use the Express VPN app on your computer or phone, you will anonymize much of your online presence by hiding your IP address. That makes your activity much more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. And what's more, ExpressVPN encrypts 100% of your network data to protect you from eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. What I like most about it is how easy it is to use because I am not the best actually when it comes to using tech, but this one, I just open the app, I click one button, and then I am protected on all of my devices. That's why ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET and Wired. So important to say that you protect your data. Revoke big tech's right to your data and secure your internet with the VPN that I trust for online protection. Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Candice to get three extra months free with my exclusive link. Go to expressvpn.com slash Candice right now to learn more. It's definitely here. America is almost at the early phase of the cancer that is Marxism. And Cuba is in the, in the late stage, 60 years later, and their people are starving and they're fighting, you know, just to be free. And it's interesting to see our media kind of spin that around. Like you said, what are you talking about? It's not happening here. Don't, what, don't even look over here. Yeah, so Cuba went the traditional route when it comes to uh, Marxism. The, the, the leaders, they, they believed in it, so they, they pushed it on the people. And the idea is you're, you're going to teach this ideology and, and the people will wake up and recognize and they're going to say this is the best thing for us. So it was the traditional way of going after it, uh, getting the leaders to believe in it. And they're going to they're gonna project it onto the people. In America, we're doing it a little bit differently. We're, we're starting from the bottom and working our way top, which is, it's a longer process, but it's a lot scarier. So they've gotten into, obviously, media, schools, and slowly they're just pushing it on us and we, we didn't even know it until now in the last couple of years has been right in front of us this whole time. Well, I love you as an athlete because I think that you hit on such important topics. Uh, you know, faith, family, I talk about it every single day, individualism, uh, working hard. These are elements that I think really uh, are, are elements that keep a country free. And so seeing you thank Jesus Christ, that's amazing. We don't see that anymore. Seeing the fact that you understand the opportunities of this beautiful country, that's amazing. But also you recently posted something on your social media that I thought was so sweet. And I, I do want to show that as well. You said, I've been waiting my whole life to be a father and I didn't even know it. I praise God for you. Um, Alva, all glory to God. Beautiful little girl. We yeah. both just became parents. Yeah. Yeah, we both yeah. just became parents. Yeah. So I'll ask you, how has that transformed your life? It was, you know, people are like, oh, you're not going to sleep good. This is going to be a thing, the blah, blah, blah. They made it sound so stressful. It's been the best thing. I come home and I see her and I could be tired or not tired. And I'm like, I'm fine. I got this. Like, oh, diaper change, no problem. I, I'll, I'll do it. Like before I used to think diaper changes were the scariest thing ever. And it's just not a, no issue now. We, we're, I'm on it. I, at night, they always... Scared you with sleep. You're not going to sleep. Honestly, I don't sleep much anyways. So it was, it's been perfect. Every, every day my family comes over to hold her and then I'll get her at night. And she's wide awake at night. She's like <laughs> eyes open staring at me. So we just have the best time every night. And then I get great sleep because she helps me calm down and just have a plan. There is something about that. And you're so right that people try to convince you, oh, it's going to be terrible. We've kind of developed this very anti-familial sentiment in the country. Um, and it's interesting because I could be having the worst day ever. It's actually, the kids are, are beautiful in this way. I can be dead tired. And my son had a bad night a couple of weeks ago. The second they look at you and they smile, it's just... There's, it's a melt in terms of the worries in your life in a way that you can't explain it. There's something so precious and sacred about children, about babies, about family. There really is. And I was watching uh, earlier when, when you were talking about, uh, I think it's Harry and Meghan, is that? Yeah, right? And I just thought to myself, how wild is that? China forced that on, on its people. And people don't know this. They have about half a billion abortions, nearly, they're, come up, they're probably around that number, half a billion abortions. But you know what the saddest part is? Most of them were girls. Do you know why? Because the girls can't carry on the family name. So most of the abortions in China were women. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and what's interesting is that I guess it took them a while to figure out that society doesn't keep going on 
when you decide to just have Yeah, they, they figured it out. But that's the crazy thing. Like I said, over there, the leaders forced it on us. Now we're doing it willingly because the ideology is slowly seeping into every part of our life. The culture. Yeah. And this like, sort of gets back to why I think UFC is taking off because, you know, it, there's almost a corporate culture where the corporations have sort of said, this is the new message, right? This is the new message. The message is it's more responsible yeah. not to have family. And unfortunately, we have children that aren't strong on their two feet and they believe in everything that their idols say and they take it unquestioningly. You know, the education system is really a wash. And I think that that is sort of the reason why they go, oh, well, then, like, this celebrity said this, so I must think that. And, and they see it. Hollywood has become so toxic, I think. I couldn't agree more. I mean, right now, sports, if... And the thing is, I know there's a lot of athletes who don't agree with that in all of these sports, but they can't say anything. And not just athletes. Let's talk about schools. I have friends who are teachers, and they're a little bit older. If they speak on it, they're going to be forced out. So... Mm -hmm. The, the old guard is going to go no matter what. And if they speak out, they'll, they go faster. And, the, and, and if they don't, eventually they're going to retire and the new, new guard's coming in. Same thing, for example, with comic books. We have friends who, who uh, in, in comics, and I love comics. And it's, it's completely changed. Now, okay, what is it? I would say 1% um, of the population would be part of the LGBT uh, uh, community. They're making three out of the four characters in, in comic books now uh, part of the LGBT community. And it, and it just doesn't make sense. And, and they're not selling because my friends tell me they're not selling. They're getting less work. So, so what's, why? Why are we doing this? And it's just, it's, it's their religion now. It's their ideology. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Candace. If you liked this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. To watch or listen to the full show, become a member today at dailywire.com slash subscribe.